Sure. As usual, thanks for uh, joining joining us today. Um, we'll start with the update. I'm sure you guys all are looking forward to on uh, Talia Tonga Vailoa. Tomorrow on Sunday, um, basically re aggravated the previous injury that he had uh, uh, against Michigan. Um, had an MRI, um, had our doctors look at it, also got a second opinion, and uh, again, just re aggravated uh, uh, the previous injury that, and very thankful he had the knee brace on in that game. Um, I know y'all hate to say hear this, but Emily, it is a game time decision. Um, he was able to make it back after the Michigan game with this same injury. Um, it's all about how his body feels and recovers, and uh, we'll continue to do the things necessary to keep his uh, safety and health at the front of our decisions. But um, again, re-aggravated an existing injury. Um, for, as far as the Indiana game, um, thoughts after watching the film. You know, I apologize to our team yesterday because, um, you know, when we won the game, I was still a little wasn't very happy with the way we played. And as I said before, I respect winning and, and winning is hard in this league, as we all know. And we knew that uh, Indiana was a, a good team that would play hard and it would be a four quarter game. And it ended up being that uh, we didn't play our best. And, you know, in, in my effort to push us to perfection, sometimes you lose sight that um, winning is hard. And so as I told our team yesterday, I apologize for not uh, not celebrating them and what they did in terms of winning a hard fought game in Bloomington. Um, we're five and two heading into homecoming. Um, homecoming is always a, a great time around here on campus where former players, former students come back. Uh, as I've said every year, homecoming is about the fans. It's not about the team. We're actually the show. And so for us, it's about doing the things uh, necessary to prepare ourselves to go out and play and be the, be the best version of ourselves on Saturday, which I know our team will do each week. They continue to do it. I think our team showed tremendous resiliency uh, in the Indiana game um, to fight from back, fight back from behind on the road. As I said, we had a lot of missing pieces in there, some starters that uh, were late scratches and the, the young players and the, the, the players that filled in for those guys filled in admirably, which is a byproduct of how we try to develop our program. Um, I've been a part of homecoming games around here. It's always a special time, as I said. Um, uh, a lot of former players are, are excited about the start that we've created for our program. So uh, we're hoping to have a great atmosphere here. The weather's supposed to be great on Saturday. So we hope to have a great atmosphere here in the Shell as we welcome back all of our former players and alums of the university. You know, as far as Northwestern goes, obviously Pat and I go way back. Uh, Got a lot of respect for the job he's done there as a head coach uh, at Northwestern, his alma mater. Uh, when you watch them on tape, um, I'm a, I, they're, they're a really hard team. I mean, they, they play hard in, in all three phases. Um, I know they had a big win early in the year against uh, Nebraska, you know, in the game against Penn State, which, you know, you watched that a couple of weeks ago. I know it was a lot of weather issues there, but they're going to fight. And, and I expect to see that same type of uh, – fight out of them when they show up here Saturday. And it's a byproduct of they're taking on a personality of who their coach is. And that's, if you know Pat Fitzgerald, uh, toughness is one of the things that people describe. And that's what this team shows. You know, on the defensive side of the ball, you know, they've got two pass rushers, 99 and 91, that uh, create issues that we will, we will have to address um, to make sure we, whoever our quarterback is, that we can do the things necessary to keep him upright and protect it. Um, on the offensive side of the ball, you know, 26, their all-purpose running back is one of the top all-purpose performers in the country. Uh, I think he leads them in passing and rushing or receiving and rushing. Um, Holinsky, the quarterback, is one of those guys that uh, has the ability to be a dual threat quarterback. Um, I will say that their offensive line is as good as an offensive line that we face. I know they have a guy, their left tackle, the projected first round draft pick. Uh, I would uh, expect them to come in and try to establish the running game um, because of the talent that they have up front on their offensive line. Um, as good as Michigan's, as good as Minnesota's a year ago, you know, when you look at them across the board. And so we've got a challenge on our hand that I know our players are excited about, uh, an opportunity to you know, have a, uh, get back on the right track here at home in front of our home crowd and do something uh, that meet, meet one of the first goals we have set for ourselves this year, which is to be a bowl eligible team. And we have that opportunity here. And I know our players are excited about it. Um, captains for this game, Greg Rose, 
Uh, Anthony Pecorella and Spencer Anderson will lead us as our game captains heading into the uh, Northwestern game. With that, I'll open it up for questions. Afternoon, Mike. Uh, What's up? The uh, first drive, uh, every first drive this season so far, you guys have been able to put points on the board. Seven games, that's not a small sample size. What have been the ingredients to being, to being able to come out and produce so quickly? You know, a lot of that credit obviously goes to Dan, um, the job he does putting together the openers. Um, you know, as most teams do, we have openers that we like. Uh, Dan has done a really good job and the offensive staff as a whole of putting together the things that we can execute while also uh, dressing them up for us to evaluate how people want to line and defend the things that we present. Um, so a lot of credit goes to Dan and the openers and, and the quarterback and uh, our players being able to execute those things. You know, we start working on our openers Thursday practice, so they usually get uh, them introduced on Thursday when we do our perfect Thursday practice. Friday, we have a, a, a walkthrough scripted deal where they hit them again, and then we do kind of a, a, a we mentally go through them on Saturday in a pregame routine where we put our players in position to, to, to know what plays we're running and when they're running them. And our players have done a good job of executing. Now, I'd like to see us be able to do that for four quarters. Um, and to me, that's the, that's the goal. And, and I think, you know, like you said, we've done a really good job starting fast. I'd like to see us finish strong. Hey, Michael, how, how much do you anticipate Talia being able to practice this week, or when, when would those decisions be made in, in terms of how much he can do in the build up to this game? I mean, they're day to day. I mean, again, this is the same exact injury he had coming out of Michigan, and he and he played very well the very next week. Um, so it's a day to day basis. I know he's living in the training room, doing all the things he can uh, to get himself back. Like I said, we're very fortunate. You know, it was just a reaggravation of the the previous injury, and and he made it back the following week and. If you know the tongue of Iloas, you know they're they're tough guys and they're going to fight through it. But we'll always do what's best for him and uh, first and foremost, and then uh, we'll have guys ready to play if he's unavailable. Um, j just to clarify, when when you mentioned the MRI, I, I guess those usually look for like structural damage. Was there nothing of that regard, or just could you give me more detail on what exactly? How to classify this? Yeah, not not a doctor, obviously. So I just go off of what he said. He had a, a sprained MCL going into the game, which is why the last two three weeks he's wore the knee brace on his uh, plant leg. He reaggravated the sprained MCL. Uh, to what degree? Uh, I didn't see the MRI. I'm out of the medical business. Uh, this strictly, I know that our doctors looked at it and felt that basically what he did was reaggravate the injury. Uh, that he had, but there was no further structural damage uh, from the first MRI that we did when he hurt himself in the Michigan game to now. Okay, that's really helpful. Um, yep. and, and on that topic, um, knowing that you have a bye coming up and, and that if he were to not play this weekend, he would get two weeks, does that have to play into the calculus at all or not? We were so worried about trying to prepare ourselves for Northwestern. And again, I respect your question, but for us, I mean, you, you put that tape on of, of Northwestern, uh, I would doubt very seriously anybody in our program feels like we're going to come into this thing and just hey, not approach it as if we've every other game that we've we prepared for. So we'll stick to kind of the standard we've set. We'll prepare the guys that are available every morning. We, get a, we have a staff meeting at 1030. Our trainer comes up. He gives me the update as to where we are uh, player-wise, who's available. And, and then we make practice decisions based off of that. So. Uh, we're going to prepare the guys that he tells me are available to get them ready to play. And then obviously, um, based on how he feels and, and the guys, because he's not the only injury we're dealing with. We're a little banged up. Um, but you know what? It gives opportunity for some of these other guys to step up and show what they're capable of doing. Yeah, Mike, just with Talia, I guess, what is your sense of relief, I guess, and, and his that this doesn't sound like it was it was more serious, just given everything yeah. he's already been through this year. And I guess when people see someone carted off like that, they're kind of probably well, fearing, the, a, fearing the worst initially. A huge sense of relief, obviously. Uh, you know, I, I stood there and watched them. Uh, you know, the way it played out, it looked like it was very painful. I'm just, we're very thankful that, you know, he, he had the knee brace. I mean, he fights us. He didn't want to play in the knee brace for the last two, three weeks. We forced him to do it. Um, you know, it was one of those plays, a totally accidental play, wasn't anything malicious. Uh, very fortunate that, like I said, that we got out of it. 
uh, with nothing further uh, to what he already had. And now it's just a matter of managing and, and the rehab that goes along with strengthening them and getting them ready to go. Hey, Coach, good to see you. Uh, your confidence level in Billy Edwards um, if he has to go? Tremendous confidence in Billy. You know, uh, a guy that, like I said, prepare. We prepare him every week. He gets 40% of the reps as the backup quarterback. Uh, you know, we'll continue to, as we monitor where Leah is on a day-to-day -day basis. Those may change, but we recruited him here once he went into the portal just for this uh, purpose. Uh, uh, a lot like a year ago, Reese Udinsky having a guy that's capable of coming in and. You know, Billy's one of those players, and you know, a lot of people probably make a lot of that he didn't complete a pass, and we really didn't try to run the ball once we or throw the ball very much. We we had a plan of what we wanted to get executed in the run game in the second half. He came in and executed it to a T, made some big plays, protected the football, um, and and I expect him to if he's the guy that has to play for us this week. I expect him to be able to come in, execute our system. Um, as well as anybody and, and, and give us a chance. Mike, as you mentioned, it's homecoming and it's about the alums. Uh, what does it mean for you to see guys that you've coached in previous stops come back uh, uh, and be trusted with the rebuilding of this program? You know, it's always great, you know, when, when your former players are, are part of the program and I say this to our players often you know it's not about them the money and giving back though we would love for those guys to continue to contribute and help us build this thing the right way but just them giving us their time I mean we realize just how valuable a commodity time is and when former players uh, come back to support the program uh, to support the the mission that we've started here to, to to get this program back to where we all can be really proud of it um, that's always a great thing. And so really looking forward, you know, like I said, it's supposed to be great weather, it's supposed to be great environments, a 3.30 kick, which is perfect. Gives people time to come back, tailgate, uh, and catch up with each other, and then come see a, a great game in the jail Saturday, and then celebrate, hopefully, if we're, we're the best version of ourselves, a, a win and, and bowl eligibility. So a lot's at stake. Um, sorry, I just thought you wanted one more quarterback question. Um, yeah, of course. Um, in terms of the offensive system with a, a Billy offense versus a Tully offense, I mean, how similar are those or how much do you adjust to make sure you're playing to their yeah. individual strengths? I mean, you always play to the quarterback's strength, but I would say that Billy and Leah are very similar. Um, though Billy didn't complete a pass in this last game, Billy is a thrower that has a, kind of a, I call it a weird athleticism because when you look at him, you wouldn't think that he is athletic as he is, but Billy has very good functional athleticism. He knows how to run the ball. You know, I kind of compared him when we started recruiting him. He kind of reminded me of uh, the old uh, Cincinnati Bengal quarterback that was down with uh, Dallas uh, that played at DC, whose name I can't remember right now. Who? Andy Dalton, very similar, not just because he's a redhead, but like <laughs> literally body type and having coached against Andy in college, he was a thrower, but he also was really functional as a runner that you better respect his legs. And Billy's one of those guys. He throws it accurately. Uh, he's smart, tough, reliable. So if the guy, if he has to play for us, there's a, we have the utmost confidence in him as a staff and as a team that he'll be able to come in and get the job done if he's, a, if he's needed. Hey, Michael. At one point, getting to bowl eligibility was the goal for this program. At, with now, you know, with a couple games left and, and this is on the horizon, how much of this just a benchmark on, on the way to, I guess, bigger things for this program and, and for you as a coach? Yeah, we're focused on just this one. And one of our first goals year in and year out is to become a bowl eligible team year in and year out. So that's part of the standard or our foundation that we want to create, which we don't take for granted. And so this is an opportunity to do it, you know, earlier than a year ago where it came down to our last game. So. Uh, shows improvement, but for us, it's just about that. This game and what this game opportunity offers us as a team, and from that point on, we'll just take it one step after this each uh, each game, like we try to do. Uh, Coach, you mentioned being banged up. There's obviously a lot of other injuries as well. Um, 
you know, a lot of the guys you mentioned as borderline guys for game time decisions, you know, having traveled on the road. Does just being at home this week maybe open the door for guys like Ruben to be available to more of an emergency capacity? Yeah, again, being at home and, and you know, Ruben's one of those guys. Jacoy Bennett's one of those guys. You know, we've had quite a few. You know, Jalen had a family emergency that popped up. Um, so being home affords us that extra day that we're not traveling where they can get more treatment by being a game that's at 3.30. We can treat them all the way up till game time. And so, yeah, a bunch of these guys will be game time decisions. And I know you guys hate it and when I say it, but it's, I mean, we literally evaluate them in warm-ups. And then when we walk up the tunnel, I ask the trainer, how does he look? Where is he? And then I ask the coach who, who warmed him up, what did he look like? And then we make a decision, hey, He's a scratch. Let's go with this guy. And that's just the this hot when we talk about game time decision, it literally is not just me buying time and trying to cover up some conspiracy theory that we hide injuries. Thank you, Coach. Appreciate your time. Thanks. Appreciate you guys.